life. I'm Anastasia Chatska, a fashion designer with over 20 years of experience and a sewing educator. And I'm really excited you're here to share another sewing adventure with me today. Welcome to Sew Anastasia, and today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome cowl neck top for fall. I love making this top out of flannel. It is so cozy and the perfect top for fall. And this is the cowl neck top that we're going to make today. Has a great huge cowl neck that you can do lots of things with, has a cute short sleeve, and it has a nice relaxed easy fit. So be sure to download the pattern and sew along with me so you can make your very own cowl top. If you're not already a subscriber to Sew Anastasia, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for following me on my sewing adventures. Also, I'm now teaching sewing classes in my design studio in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm also teaching them virtually, so make sure you check them out at SewingAnastasia.com. Supplies for creating this top are super simple. You're going to need your rotary cutter or some scissors. You're going to need some matching thread. You're also gonna need this four piece pattern that you can download on the website. So I love this top because it is so simple. We're literally gonna have a front pattern piece. We're going to have a sleeve, it's a short sleeve, you could totally make it a long sleeve. We're also gonna have a giant rectangle for the cowl and we're going to have a back pattern piece. So this one is great to print out at home on your computer or you can send it in and have it printed out as a large PDF as well. You're also gonna need some pattern weights and you're going to need a fabulous plaid fabric. I'm going to be using this plaid flannel right here. So don't forget that the pattern is downloadable on sewingastasia.com and I designed the pattern. The first thing we're gonna do is lay out our fabric and put our pattern on top and cut out our pattern pieces out of fabric. I have my center front bodice and my center back bodice laid out. I have these both placed on a fold so that way they're gonna open up and be one piece for center front and one piece for center back. I've also lined up my plaid so I have the bottom with this bright yellow plaid line here and I also have that lined up on the other one over here. So hopefully our plaids on the side seam somewhat match. So let's go ahead and cut it out. Next, we're gonna cut out the cowl, which is cut one on fold, and it's gonna be on this really long side, the fold. So that way we end up with a big cowl that's fully lined. And then over here we have the sleeve, which is going to be cut two. So let's start cutting. Now that we have all the pieces cut out, let's take a look at what we have and how they should be looking. We have the back of the shirt here. We have the front of the shirt here. We have two sleeves. And this giant rectangle here is going to be our cowl. Our next step is going to be finishing all of our edges. You can choose to serge it, overcast it, or zigzag it. So choose your method and finish all of the edges of every single piece of fabric you have cut out. I'm going to be using the serger. I just love the nice clean finish edge the serger gives. Let's get serging. And we're finished. First thing we're gonna do is place our shoulder seams together, right sides together, and sew these up. The seam allowance on this pattern is 3 8 of an inch. If you wanna use bigger seam allowance, make sure you cut out a bigger size. So we are gonna sew these little shoulder seams up. And then for our second step, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna iron open our seams, and we're going to fit the top of our sleeve into the armhole here, making sure that we're placing it right sides together and lining up the tip of the shoulder with the shoulder seam. So let's head over to the sewing machine and sew those up. And I'm gonna go over all the steps with you in detail so that way you get a beautiful top. So let's get sewing. I'm so excited to start this shirt. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end of your seam. And cut. Then we're gonna move on 
on to the next one. Back stitch and cut. Shoulders are looking great. Everything lined up really nice. Now what you want to do is iron open your seam so that way when we put it in the sleeve, it's not as bulky with it being pushed over to one side. So iron open your seam. Now that I have the shoulders looking great, it's time to work on the sleeves. Now we are going to set in the sleeve into that armhole and this is probably the trickiest part of this entire project because you don't want a wonky looking sleeve. That is no good at all. So I'm going to go over all of this in detail with you. First thing you need to do is fold your sleeve in half and by doing this you're going to be able to identify what is the front of the sleeve and what is the back of the sleeve. The front of the sleeve is always cut lower than the back of the sleeve which is cut higher and this will also show you where the tip of your sleeve is as well. So you want to go ahead and mark so that way you don't forget the front of the sleeve and the very tip of the sleeve for when we're setting it in. And if you need help setting in sleeves make sure you check out my video on how to set in a sleeve. So I've marked on my sleeve one little mark here so I know this is the front of the sleeve and I've marked the very tip of the sleeve as well. Now what we're going to do is open up the sleeve and we're going to put two rows of basting stitches from about two inches up from the bottom on each side. So right here we're going to put two rows of basting stitches. And we're going to put in two rows of basting stitches because what it does is it gives the sleeve a nice curve at the top for your shoulder and since we're not paper dolls we need all the curves we can get for our bodies. For the first row of basting stitches I'm going to line up the edge of the foot with the edge of my fabric. <laughs> Remember to stop at least two inches from the end of your sleeve, lift up your foot and pull out your fabric. Now we're going to put one more row of basting stitches. For the second row of basting stitches, I'm going to use the edge of my foot, lining it up with the last row of stitches I just put in. To set in the sleeve, you're going to hold your two top threads and pull your fabric down the threads. So that way we can gather it up, but we don't actually want to create gathers when we're sewing. We want to even this out. We just want enough so that way it's going to create the shape for the top of the shoulder. So it's giving us a really nice shape. And now we can pin it into the armhole. First thing I'm going to do is line up the mark I put at the tip of the shoulder on the sleeve with the seam line for the shoulder. So we want those to line up nice. And now I'm going to work my way around this armhole. I really like to pin the bottom of the sleeves because I know this is going to be nice and flat and line up really well. And then we can work with the ease in the sleeve. And I'm going to go ahead and pin both sides here so I can see how much ease I'm actually working with. Okay. And now we can work our way around the top of the sleeve and make sure everything is laying flat. Even though the sleeve is curving and kind of ruffling or bubbling up here, that's totally normal. That's because we're setting that bigger piece of fabric into the sleeve and it's kind of scrunching it up and making it create shape. You just want to make sure it's not scrunching it up so much that you're going to be sewing little tucks or gathers into it because this is not a gathered sleeve. This is just a set in sleeve. So now we are all pinned in and we are ready to sew up the sleeve and we are going to sew it up at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Don't forget to turn your stitch length back to normal and don't forget to back stitch as well. Stitch at the end and cut. Now we have a set 
thin sleeve on our top. It is looking great. And don't worry about these basting stitches that you can see. You can go ahead and remove them. So you can really see how the sleeve is starting to come together and there's some shape up here for the top of our arm. Now let's do the exact same thing to the other side for the sleeve. Now that we have both of the sleeves in, it should look something like this, front and back. Our next step is going to be sewing up the side seam and the underarm seam of the sleeve at the same time. This here is the side seam of the bodice and this short little seam here is going to be the underarm of the sleeve. We really want to make sure that we're matching the underarms of the sleeves front to back. So I like to line these up and make sure I put a pin right here. Now I know that those are going to line up. We can go over to the sewing machine and sew up the seam in one swoop, side seam and underarm seam all at the same time. Don't forget your seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch and also don't forget to back stitch. Our seam here is looking great. Also make sure that when you have your seams overlapping that they are pressed open so that way they're not as bulky. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now that we have the shirt all sewn up, it's time to move on to the cowl. The exciting part, the first step for sewing the cowl is placing right sides together and we're gonna sew up these two short sides together so that way we're gonna end up with one long tube. Don't forget your seam allowances are 3 eighths of an inch. You get to the end, back stitch and cut. Now we have one long tube for our neck. And to make sure we have a cozy soft side on the inside and the outside, we're gonna fold this wrong sides together in half. We want to make sure we're lining up the two surged edges. And now we have our cowl ready to be sewn into our neckline. We are about to complete our last big step, but we are so close to being finished and having this super cozy top for fall. For the next step, you want your shirt to be inside out. And now what we're gonna do is take the cowl with the surged edge up and put the cowl into the neckline. Now I like to make sure that the seam I have on the cowl is going to be at center back. So make sure you turn it so it's at center back. Okay, so now I have the cowl in here and what I need to do is go ahead and pin all three of these layers together all the way around the neckline. So we're gonna line up all three layers and pin them together, making sure that the seam is at center back. So you're just going to work your way all the way around the neckline and make sure you're pinning all three layers together. Okay, now that we have it all pinned up, we are ready to sew all three layers together in a circle and make sure you're using that 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, let's sew it up. Don't forget the back stitch. Stitch and cut. Now that we have the cowl on, it is looking so complete and cozy. Super excited about this shirt. But we have one last step and that's hemming all the raw edges. We're going to hem the opening of the shirt, just turning it up about a half inch and stitching it down. We're going to be doing a single folded hem. You could also do a rolled hem if you had a thinner fabric, no worries. But this fabric's pretty thick, so I'm going to be doing a single folded hem. We're also going to be hemming the sleeves the exact same way. So just flipping it up a half inch and sewing all the way around the sleeve opening. So we're gonna hem all of that and then we will be done and we get to try it on and check out all of our awesome handiwork. Don't forget to back stitch. And 
we're finished. We did it! We finished the cowl neck top. I just love how cozy the top is. I love what an easy fit this is. I love that short sleeve. It turned out so good. I'm gonna make one of these in every single plaid fabric available. All the hems look great. Those turned out really well with the single fold. And this collar is really fun because you can actually take it and roll it down and turn it into a stand-up collar and then it gets this super 60s mod vibe going on. So I love clothes that you can transform really easy. How great is that? I love how versatile this top is because it's not super big and bulky, but it's cozy. So I can wear a blazer over it, I can wear another sweater or a cardigan over it. You can really layer with this piece is one of the reasons that I really love this piece. There's so many different ways you can wear it. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. I hope you had fun making this cowl neck top with me. I know, I love it. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this top. And don't forget, if you'd like to sew along with me, download the pattern at sewingastasia.com under digital downloads. And if you do sew it up, I would love to see it. So make sure you tag me at Sewing Anastasia so that way I can repost it and share it with everyone else and keep the creativity flowing. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all those fabulous social media websites, make sure you follow me so that way we can stay connected. And don't forget about my sewing classes that I'm now teaching in person and virtually. And you can check those all out at SewingAnastasia.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.